It is Friday the 18th of April, 5th day of the Maybank Malaysian Open and the second day of the tournament. It's going to be a quite an exciting afternoon. It's very, very hot. It rained a little bit this morning. I'm still trying. I tried to talk to Tong Chai yesterday but he was very, very busy. For the past two days, I've been trying to talk to this very handsome young gentleman here, Matteo, but um, he's also been very busy. His uh, manager said, okay, you can see him at uh, 6 o'clock yesterday evening, but then after that, I don't know what happened. This South African did as good. He chatted to us in the second day, first day, second day. Thank you very much, Lewis. And of course, I need to talk to Lee West when we spoke to his caddy, Billy Foster, the other day, but I'm still trying to talk to him. Anyway, I'm going to be speaking to Malaysia's leading amateur golfer, Gavin Carl Green, later on. And I really am curious to know what goes on behind the scenes, especially in the kitchen, when it comes to the palate of these international players. So stay around. It's going to be a great, great video today, I think. It, it, will, it will be. It will be. I'm here with Gavin Carl Green, who is Malaysia's leading amateur. Hello, sir. How are you doing? Good. Uh, what's uh, what's how? I heard your game yesterday was uh, really good. Um, I, was, I mean, it, it's really good actually. But then this things didn't click very well yesterday. But I mean, you know, hopefully today we'll um, we'll just get things clicking. No, you, you did pretty well last year, but you said you know you it was unexpected for you. That's what you for said. Sure, yeah. um, so what are you expecting for this year? If this is uh, concerned. I mean, I'm just going out to play my best today, and then you know that usually puts me at a good spot. Okay. And um, well, hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully you know, it's good enough to make the cut, and then um, you know, hopefully I can just move on from there. Do you feel a lot of pressure um, knowing that there are a lot of eyes on you? That um, he's our future. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. A little, I mean, a little bit for sure. A little bit for sure. But um, you know, I still gotta just play my game and not do so much stuff. Okay. You know, just you know, keep you know, keep it you know within my own reach. You know, don't go so crazy about you know small things. Sure, yeah. sure. And um, in terms of you know, you started to play golf. How did that all happen for you? What's the background like? That I, to be honest with you, probably started from my dad. Okay. That's that's how it actually all got started because he wanted to pick up golf, I think, and then I tagged along and then all of a sudden there you go. Now I understand you're also a business student. Um, mm -hmm. um, in terms of education and becoming a pro golfer, um, how are the two going to it's meet? It's hard. It's hard. It's very hard because like I gotta maintain my school grades and you know play good golf at the same time and you know nothing's easy about that. But I mean it works. I'm doing well in it so okay. I'm happy with myself. Yeah. All right. Well thank you very much thank and very good much. luck for today. Appreciate it. Now I want to find out what makes um, Gavin tick, so I'm going to talk to his dad, Gary, Mr. Gary Green. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. Um, how does it feel having your son, um, you know, be at the place he's at right now? Um, I think it's great. I mean, we're very happy with what he's doing. And um, I suppose it's a matter of just um, supporting him to what he's doing right now. Okay. No, you know, he said that, I said, I asked him, I said, how did you get to golf? He said, oh, it's because of dad. So <laughs> did you have any ambitions or dreams of becoming a pro golfer not, and not at all. had him tag along and carry your clubs for you? No, not at all. <laughs> a friend introduced us to the game in Malacca mm -hmm. many, many years ago and he happened to be there. The friend how introduced old was us. he at that time? Um, seven. Wow. Seven was about the age, yeah. And he was already... Into showing it. interest in the game. That's right. And you saw the potential? Correct. Oh, and only after that we got him a coach and took off from there. Okay, and now you caddy for him? As and when I can. So and are you yeah. his coach and caddy? No, he's got two coaches. He's one's in the US and okay. one's back here, his swing coach. Right, back so here. what's it like caddying for him? Does he listen to you or do you still tell him what to do? Or well, what's, I miss, like? I, what's, what's the father I'm, and son <laughs> relationship like when it comes to stopping the golf course? Great question. Um, I'm his dad, but when it comes to golf, he's the player. Mm -hmm. I just give the advice. Um, I think I have to, and a step back. The decisions are his.
Ladies and gentlemen, I am with Steven Theopta, who is the general manager of KLGCC from all the way from South Africa, Cape Town actually. So yeah, well, let's talk about KLGCC in collaboration with um, Maybank Malaysian Oak and how long has it been and you know, what's it been like for you? This is, well this is the fifth year we've had the Maybank Malaysian Open and uh, this is my second one. I arrived in 2012. Uh, it's just been fantastic. It's the National Open, you know, and uh, it's a hundred and fifty-six event. Yeah, 156 golfers representing Asia mm -hmm. from all over the world. It's just a huge field to okay. get through with the weather problems that we have here. Um, and just to be associated with, a, with, with an Open, a National Open, is an honour for the club. So we're very happy. Yeah. Um, what's the involvement been like and, and how long have preparations um, been underway? Yeah, we, we prepare pretty much the whole year. About a year of preparation, you would say? About a year of preparation for the overall facility. There's a big clubhouse, 250,000 square feet mm -hmm. clubhouse. Uh, the facilities are enormous. So. Uh, it takes about a year to prepare the clubhouse uh, and all the facilities and the golf course is ongoing throughout the year but to get it to tournament conditions is about six months. Or oh, rather it's said that this is the toughest course to play in Malaysia, why is that? Well I'm not so sure whether it's uh, the toughest golf course, there's some tough golf, golf courses, some amazing golf courses in Malaysia but mm -hmm. what we do for the uh, Maybank Malaysian Open is we toughen it up a bit. How do you do that? We grow the rough longer. Um, and uh, we speed up the greens and uh, we lengthen the golf course so it's longer for the pros. But, you know, that's tough for the members. So it takes a while for the rough to come down and for us to get the golf course back to member friendly conditions. You know? So and do you close it off to members before, just we, before the tournament? We close it for three weeks before the tournament to, to members. Um, oh, really? So, okay. yeah, so there's a perception that it's the toughest. Uh, it definitely is one of the toughest. Um, but not necessarily the topic. I am in one of my favorite places of all time, the kitchen. Now very, very important for a world-class event like this to have a very special person cook up all the meals for the players, the audience, or whoever's coming here at KLGCC. So I'd like to say hello to Chef Arno. Basically, we're talking about a world-class event here. Um, what has preparation been like for you and for your team? Um, it's getting easier every year fact is that uh, we have been doing a lot of uh, international tournaments um, but each tournament on its own is different okay. in a sense that uh, there are different requirements the pl there's a lot of planning before like a two months before the pro tournament proper we will have a lot of uh, planning and uh, discussion among ourselves uh, regarding the menu mm -hmm. um, you know looking at which tournament it is and where the players are coming from sure. so the menu is somewhat crafted in a sense to suit the players taste okay. um, so but speaking, speaking about the players I mean all of them they're all from all over the world right um, how do you cater to each and every single one of their palettes uh, well one one is that one is that you you must have a a vast international knowledge on, on international cuisine, okay. Okay. Um, which is a requirement because you know some are Italian, some are British, some are American, some are Korean, okay. um, and knowing a little bit and, and having a strong knowledge of it uh, allows us to, you know, craft it and maybe modify a little bit to suit what we Play have. Play around, the, make it yeah, all fusion correct. and stuff. Yeah. Well, being in the kitchen has definitely wet my appetite. So, it's Friday afternoon. What else can I do but indulge in food, food, food? Since I can't be out there playing golf, because I can't play golf, actually, well, at least I can enjoy the golfer's terrace menu. So, I'm going to grab this piece of very, very healthy, flawless zucchini bread, and I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow's the weekend. Yay!